at what you're doing. So the recording, make sure it's got a little bit of leeway there. Hi, I'm Pat McGrew, McGrew Group, and I am here today with the magnificent Jeff White of the Print and Graphic Scholarship Foundation. And one of the reasons we're getting together is because you know, our industry needs to grow the next generation of leaders, and that doesn't happen for free. Uh, they, they, there needs to be a little bit of help along the way. And, and Jeff, one of the things about PGSF is that uh, you're exactly that group of people. Uh, you're, you're, you've been around forever. I mean, 1956 uh, yeah. from the start, first scholarships awarded in 1958. I was born in 1957, so there we go. We're we're all the the same age, and there's yeah. a cool there's a cool story here. So, what can you tell me about PGSF and why people should care? Well, I think the important thing is we are focused solely on the on the printing and graphic arts industry, whether that's digital, you know, traditional sheet fed web, uh, inkjet, textiles. Now, if we can find people that are interested in going with that, that'd be wonderful. So all of our awards, all of our scholarships have to go to students that are either in a two, a four year or some technical technical program um, with a focus on the graphic arts industry. That's that's the real key. Um, last year, we had a we had a very good year. Uh, we awarded about five hundred fifty thousand dollars in scholarships wow. to over two hundred twenty students. Um, now, some of those students, let me play back up a second. Some of those students were awarded scholarships previously. So if you, when you apply for a scholarship, you can apply in high school, you can apply in college. Once you get that scholarship, you have that scholarship for the remainder of your education as long, there's <laughs> always a caveat, right? Yeah. Uh, as long as you maintain a, a 3.0 uh, okay. average, uh, you, that, that scholarship will just renew year after, after year for you. So and we have over... So a uh, quick question there, when, when you say uh, renew every year and I mean, what kind of grant or what kind of scholarship might I get from you? Is it is it uh, enough to cover books or is is it a, a substantial amount or does it vary? Yeah, well, it's, it's fairly substantial. The, the smallest ones are around twenty five hundred dollars. OK. Uh, and they go up to five thousand dollars, sometimes a little bit more if we have a specific grant. There are endowments. Uh, we have quite a few endowments. People have endowed twenty five thousand, fifty thousand, hundred thousand hundred thousand dollars. Uh, and they can put criteria on those grants that say, okay. I want to give X amount uh, if the if my investment has risen up by so much, I want to continue to give $5,000 oh, nice. a year no matter what. So um, wow. and then we have general contributions as well. So we did, I think, a little over 100 new scholarships last year. The other of the 220 were, were re-ups of the scholarships. So it's, it's really impressive. This year we had... Um, Thank, thanks to the stock market, um, <laughs> our, our asset base is a little over $11 million um, that we can use to, to fund these wow. scholarships. And our, our goal is to really not touch the principal. We want to use the investment income uh, and any, any uh, ad hoc donations that come in. People give us $10, $25, $100. We'll use those to fund scholarships in that given year. And so somebody told me uh, a, a couple of years ago, I was talking to people about scholarship groups and, and they said to me, oh, well, you know, the print industry, nobody's teaching print anymore. Nobody's teaching graphic arts anymore. I mean, there's just nowhere to go to school to learn these things. I, I, I would like to disabuse people of that. Can you help me? I would love to. Um, those 220 scholarships that we gave were to 92 colleges and universities around the United States. Okay. So there are I would 92. Have that. What? <laughs> I would not have guessed that. No, I, I, I was amazed too. And we actually, on our website, pgsf.org, there is a list of all the colleges that people can go to and see uh, with their programs. Now, okay. the, the downside is some of these programs are getting smaller. They're, they're, they're cutting them out it's primarily in the high schools. You know, we don't grant scholarships to high schools, but we're seeing a, a rapid drop off in high schools that actually do have programs that will, you know, basically launch people into a, a career in the graphic arts. So that's that's kind of sad. We we kind of work to preserve those as we can. So when you look at the the way that you're, you know, the schools that you're working with and the, the schools that that you can direct people to that have these programs, do do they tend to be uh, full range programs? So you know, can I go learn, uh, you know? 
all of the things I need to know to create the right kind of graphic formats and yeah. files. Because so many complaints I hear from printers is that people come out of school and all they can do is create a web page. They don't know how to create anything for print. So you guys can help direct people to get trained to be able to support the print industry. Yes, yeah. In fact, I had a good conversation with Bill Pope, who's, who's working with the RIT Advisory Board the other day uh, about RITs trying to rebuild their program, um, which is kind of near and dear to me since that's where I, I went back in the dark ages. Actually didn't get a scholarship from PGSF because I wasn't aware of it, which is part of what this is for is to make right. people more aware of it, you know? Right. Um, we like to get a lot of applications. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're trying to do is, is basically get people into curriculums where when they come out, they understand how to create a file that can go to a multitude of different output uh, uh, methodologies. And, whether and it's, does whether it have it's a to web be page, just, digital or print? Right? Does it have to be just like for what I think of as sort of flat graphic arts or if I want to go uh, say to, Cal Poly and and specialize packaging. in packaging. Yeah, um, that that counts, right? That counts too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and is it only for U.S. schools, or can I yes. get some of my Canadian friends? No, unfortunately, it's not good in Canada. It's only okay. for the U.S. Canada does have a uh, scholarship foundation similar to what we do. So Canadian students that are you know want to want to they can find it on our website how to link it to their site. Uh, okay, good. Yeah, because I know yeah. Ryerson is one of the places that well, I yeah, see a lot a of graduates right. take jobs. Um, unfortunately, we our bylaws uh, don't allow that. That's so. okay. We we can yeah. be U.S. centric. <laughs> it is just fine. We'll put links um, in in the abstract yeah. of of this video now, as well. Just, just to be clear on that, um, it, it's the students don't have to be from the United States. Just right? the school I mean, they go to. They, they have to attend a school in the United States. And so. If, I would imagine that every year you live by a calendar. Um, you know, at, at some point applications have to be due. At some point, is, is there a, an essay that goes with all of this, or is it is it just uh, you know what kind of criteria do you use? Let me just ask that. So that's a great question. So there's a there's an online form that the students fill out. It has about ten or fifteen questions. Asks them for past experience if they have any. Uh, any family in the industry, what were your grades from high school, they have to submit those. If you're in college, you have to submit those. And then to get the ongoing scholarship, you need to submit your grades uh, at the end of the year to, to re-up your, your sure. scholarship. Um, we look for a couple of reference letters, uh, if possible, that, that always helps. But the nice thing is it's up until two years ago, this actually, this will be the second year we're doing it online. Um, previous, we would, this is all a paper form that was filled out and mailed to Bernie Eckert, uh, who, who was still in charge of everything up at, in uh, Sewickley, or actually up in Cranberry now, where PIA headquarters is. Yeah. Uh, and we would have meetings and people would fly in and we would sit around a table and a group of us would review two to 300 new applications and we grade them. The, there's all the questions and we go through them, we grade them one to five, et cetera, or one to 10. Uh, and everybody's application gets graded twice by different people so that, you know, somebody might see something that somebody else doesn't see. Uh, and then Bernie compiles all of those. Uh, and then she has the, uh, the, the, the lucky task to go through all of those and try and tie them to a lot of these scholarships that have been pinpointed, right. you know, to, to a specific curriculum, to a specific university. Some people say, you know, I want, uh, here's my endowment. I want it to go to... Uh, uh, female students that are attending Stout, you know. There you go. Stout. Yep. So she's got to try and do all those those matches before we finally award them. So the deadline is coming up for this year's scholarship submissions. It's in May, um, and we will start reviewing those scholarship applications uh, usually around the first week of June. The good news is now with thank with COVID <laughs> last year we everybody's home. Out, everybody's home. Uh, John Berthelsen, um, when he had the position I had a couple of years ago, put in a product called Kaleidoscope, which is based off of Salesforce, and the students right. apply, apply through that scholarship application fund, and then we can all do the reviews on our own at our own pace. They, they just pop up on our email, uh, and we review them. So <laughs> we picked a good year to do it, because I don't know how we would have done it last year. It would have been a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, so so I can, and I can apply at any time, right? So if, if I'm a potential student, then or if I am a student in a program, I can jump on that online link now and, right. and get in there. Right, right. And, and this is sort of evergreen, right? So you'll close it in May, 
you'll start your review in June, but then somebody in October could do yeah, we reopen, I think in year. late August, early September, we okay. reopen. Yeah. Okay. So that it's a constant process. So right. I understand the scholarships are really important and we want everybody who thinks that that they might want to come into our industry well we we of course we want them want them to jump on but you also run contests yeah. so can you tell me a little bit about that because that sounds like it could be a lot of fun it is a lot of fun we had um a couple of years ago we started with a poster contest and we used the poster uh whoever wins the poster contest we, we print those up and we mail them out to all the schools to hang on their bulletin boards or, or whatever uh, a couple of years ago, we decided to enhance that and we added a t-shirt contest. So students can design a t-shirt and then <laughs> the winning, the winning t-shirt was supposed to get printed last year at uh, <laughs> the, the SGIA slash Print United show. Needless to say, that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, so we had uh, uh, a company out in Denver donated their time and effort and all the t-shirts and we printed those and then Subtle Strauss up in uh, Wisconsin is doing the distribution and we printed about 350 t-shirts and if you make a 25 dollars donation uh you get a you get a t-shirt okay. uh, it's really nice so we're enough, doing that again for this year then we are in fact <laughs> unfortunately the deadline was saturday okay <laughs> we're, all right we're applying for that but the okay. good news is i i checked this morning uh last year we had 75 poster applications and about the same number of t-shirts uh this year we have well over 200 of each oh wow so, That's a lot of judging to do. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> You'd like to be a judge? <laughs> I'd be delighted to be a judge. Just tell me where to sign up. Yeah. So this week, I will actually be taking all of those entries and putting them in a, a PDF that's small enough to distribute to a, to a group of people sure. um, to whittle down the list. And then this year, we're going to try something a little bit different. Um, we're going to get down to the top five or 10 in each category. And then we're going to post it on social media and let uh, open it up to the general public to vote on what we think is the top top group. Oh, Putting, having people go through 200 good. is ridiculous. So, you know, so that's going to be something new. Yeah, but us. that speaks to the fact that, I mean, clearly something happened that people got on board with the contest. So that's yeah. really good news, right? Well, yeah. So I, if we a have a printing United, if what? we have a printing United this year, we, we should see them being printed? I hope so. We still have not found somebody to volunteer to print them yet. So um, maybe they'll, somebody will see this message and they'll they'll step up and want to print the t-shirts at, at Printing United this year. Okay, so. we can start passing that word around yeah. that that shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. So, uh, so you've got the really cool scholarship opportunity, which is massive. And I know that there are going to be a lot of people who will be interested. The contest is uh, going into judging, so mm -hmm. uh, but stay tuned for next year, right? Because you'll right. you'll run a contest again next year, and you have a brand new website. Well, there's one other contest we have too, which I I, I don't want to I want to make sure I mention that we have the Gravure Association of America has a technical writing contest, uh, and students can this, this what you have to do is on the web our website under contests. Um, they submit a technical paper about gravure. Uh, and then the Gravure Association reviews all of those and decides, okay, which is the best one? And then they award, they award money to that student who wants to go in and study gravure some more. And they are very active. Um, they were one of the organizations that had their own scholarship foundation. And they, along with several others throughout the United States, have decided that it was easier to have us manage their money for them. Sure. So they transferred their money to us. They still get to decide how it's going to be allocated, but it all goes into our big bucket, which makes it obviously more cost-effective to manage the uh, the portfolio. Right, and Gravure is not dead. I mean, oh, well, no. print is not dead, right. and 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 some of those traditional forms of printing that they're so important because they feed a certain market and they they meet certain criteria. Some of the gravure work I've seen is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Just awesome. So and, cool. And, and people don't realize how much is printed with gravure. You know, my, my, my tabletop on my desk probably is printed for a gravure. I think people yeah. are surprised to find. Uh, I, I had a friend who was at my house uh, a couple years ago. And as he was walking through my house, he kept saying, well, you know, that's printed and that's printed and that's printed. And he's looking at my cabinets and my floor and the tile on my floor. So printing is this really amazing yeah. ecosystem. 
We have know, a lot of opportunity. You know, the, the, sorry, the packaging you brought up before is really important to get more packaging students involved. And I think the other thing, which we're, maybe you can you can spread the word on this too, is people are doing textiles. You know, text growth of textiles, it's especially in the area, area, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So that's that's another area that we need to look at. The other place, um, which I don't think students think about, you could be a chemistry major that wants to look in going to ink. Ink. You know, and that would certainly qualify. Uh, as well. So you know, I, I would imagine material sciences for paper as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anything right? that's applicable. Yeah. yeah it, it, paper touches everything. You mm -hmm. know, it, it really is the thread in our lives. So, Jeff, how do I donate? Uh, you, you've gotten me excited now. How do I donate? Uh, send me a check. No. The, the, right now, the, we, we do have the new website, which you brought up. And on the website, um, there will be a donation page. We just released the new website about a week or so ago right. uh, and we're still nailing down the donation page on that we had a, a different donation site it was not working well it was causing us more concern than uh okay. it was worth it so uh, we're building a new site that'll have paypal available on it really? uh, so you can pay right through paypal uh, you can also there's an address you can mail a check to the the printing graphic scholarship foundation um also we have some people that have endowed scholarships if they want to put it in their will Really? Uh, we have many, many people that have done that, that have been in the industry for a long time. They say, you know what, I need to figure out what I'm going to do as a legacy gift to, to this industry that's been so good to me. Uh, so they can do that. And if they let us know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of. Uh, and you feature your donors too. You do something do. really very nice. You've got a page where not just the big donors are featured, but also the individual donors are featured. Right. Yeah. So if you like seeing your name in pixels, um, yeah. That this is a place you can do it. <laughs> well, and, and the thing is, you know, don't, yeah, I think the, it's like a hundred bucks or something like that when you put your name on the website, but don't think you have to donate a hundred dollars. You know, $25 is, is great. You know, two Starbucks a month, that would be really nice for you to send to us. We, uh, we also have, you know, we've been making a real strong push on Smile, Amazon Smile. Yeah. Um, because you can get a donation. So everything I buy on Amazon goes through Amazon Smile and you know, we don't get a lot of money. Uh, but, no, but but, but it really is. It's nice visibility too. It, yeah. it and it, people have to buy stuff anyway. It right. looks like we're many of us will be working from home for some time to come, so we will probably be relying on those lovely Amazon boxes. Right, and we might as well take our little two, whatever it is, two tenths of a percent or something. We get it, exactly. Or, 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 yeah. But it, better it, than better really us than Jeff Bezos. You know, I think you can probably do more with that money than he can. Yeah, so that's yeah. really cool. All right. So, so we've done scholarship. We've done contests. We've done website. We've done how to donate. What's the last thing you want to say to folks who are listening to convince them that PGSF is the place that they should support? Well, our industry is is very, very important to everything. As you mentioned, as you know, I look around my office, there's printing everywhere. We need to find ways to get kids more excited about going into the industry. I think our real focus as an industry organization needs to be to find ways to make, you know, I don't want to say print relevant. Print is relevant. Print is extremely relevant. Yeah. We just need to let people understand why it's relevant. You know, I, I always like the, the uh, people say, you know, just, you don't think print's relevant? Go down the canned food aisle in a supermarket and try and figure out what's in all those cans if they weren't printed. Right or any place in, the, in any store anywhere, right? Yeah. Um, so that's what I think we really need to focus on is, is trying to figure out ways to get students more interested in going into the business in the first place. Um, and then I'll, the other thing I want to say is if if you have a printing company, um, it would be really great if you could donate to us. You know, no matter what it is, you, we're just helping you and helping your future by you giving us giving us a donation. That's and great. You, and that's that's in kind as well as checks, right? Checks, yeah, checks is checks fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's if you endow cool. a scholarship for twenty five thousand dollars, you can, you know, you can set up the rules and regulations to how it's going to how it's going to be doled out, you know. Right. Okay. Um, so, I, so your name lives forever. Exactly. You know, we'll never chew into the principle on that. It'll just go on for, for, for perpetuity. Um, that is so brilliant. Good. It works. It's physical. I've been involved since 1993, I think. Uh, I was on the, I donated first when I was a, uh, right out of college. 
well, maybe 10 years out of college and had some money finally. <laughs> I wasn't paying off the student loans. And yeah. uh, I got very involved, very interested in it. I ended up on the board um, for, uh, I was on the board for nine years. Then you get they get thrown off the board uh, for a year. And I went back on for another, I think it was almost another nine years. And then I was hired by them after I retired from EFI last year. So it's a wonderful organization. So Very if you work in the industry, if you work in the industry right now, it's worth going over to the pgsf.org website and see if your company is already involved yeah. and see who maybe you've got somebody sitting on the board. If not, then reach out and you should be part of that group. Correct. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, Jeff. Thank you so much. Thank Remember, you, everybody. I really appreciate the time that you've given us. Yeah, remember pgsf.org, it's the place to be, it's the place to learn. Thanks. Thanks.